Hey, Cam. Yes, Don. Do you ever think about how crammed your trailer is when you go race? Dude, all the time. Race cars, golf carts, jets, power wheels, and all of his toys, his little dirt bikes, his strider bikes, all that stuff. I'm crammed. But I'm sure everybody in motorsports is feeling the same way. Well, now our audience has someone to call. They need to call Lance at lbtrailers.com. Lance is carrying over 70 motorsports haulers in stock options from top to bottom. We always talk about looking the part in motorsports, traveling up and down the road and at the track. Now you can look the part with LB Trailer Sales. Go to online to lbtrailers.com or stop by Facebook at LB Trailer Sales. You have a friend in the trailer business and make sure to tell them that Racers and Rental Cars sent you. Let's put it up for the weekend warriors. It's your Racers and Rental Cars podcast with your host, Top Fuel Cam, Cameron Bray, and his co-host, Mr. Top Sportsman, Don O'Neill. Keep on till they can ignore you. Put it up for the weekend warriors. Thank you for downloading today's episode of the Racers and Rental Cars podcast, brought to you in part by MotionRaceworks.com. Stop by Motion Raceworks for all your high-performance needs. If you need to go fast, visit MotionRaceworks.com today. What's up, West Coast Cam? <laughs> Hi, Don. You're, listen to you. You're all smiling and laughing. It must be what all professors are and, and educators when they don't have to go to work for a freaking week. Make that two weeks. Thank you. Hey. Uh, shocker. But yes, I'm like already bored to tears. Dude, so... Family listeners at home, uh, this is actually being recorded on Tuesday. For the love of God, how we pulled this off. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I forgot. We're all locked in our houses. Uh, they just announced in the great state of Indiana, down here in southern Indiana, which is absurd word to describe where I live in Indiana, but nonetheless, they just closed us down for two more additional weeks. So For school? So that's a month? Yep. Dude, oh, look, we're getting ready. Damn. Look, Kansas, thank God for Twitter. Kansas just canceled the rest of the school year. Not going back. Done. Get out of town. Done. Done like wow. my post this morning. Done. What? Dude. So then what? So here's the thing. Being an educator, I've been in some of these uh, meetings or heard Cliff Notes versions of the meetings that I was supposed to be in. Um they're talking about like having to make up all this time during the summer. And I'm like, dude, just let's just let it rip. Let's just do it online or whatever. And we'll figure out how to do it. I'm not interested in teaching in the summer. I already have to teach summer school, let alone make up courses. Don't they know that that's prime racing season? Hey, look, don't you get a paycheck? Currently? Yes. Aren't you under contract? Yes. Shut up and play ball. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Let's do it. I, you know, I hear I am just twiddling my thumbs. Just no, doing whatever. So it's it's kind of. I mean, we're a motorsports show. We're not a you know a business education of the world show. So it's kind of tough to. But it's like ridiculous what's going on. So I've got, as everybody knows, I have three daughters. So I got one that's four hours away from me that I was planning on going to see before she goes back to Oklahoma and Wednesday she sends me a text and says, Hey, the base is locked down. You can't come to graduation. You can't come see me and we can't go outside 50 miles from the base. So I'm like, all right, well that sucks, but I get it. Now our youngest school's been closed down. She is doing distance learning this week. So she's had classes every day, uh, homework. So that's cool. No biggie. And Spectrum, they finally get like a high five. They offered free internet service uh, to anyone who didn't have it, kid-wise, that needed to do distance learning. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, Uh, That's a pretty good ploy, marketing ploy. I like that. Yep. So I was pretty happy with them, but they freaking should for the amount of money that I pay for internet service, but that's a different topic. Next is our oldest, who is in Charleston at college. We thought we had the perfect plan. She was going to stick around hang out during spring break. She was going to work, work on grant projects. You know, no biggie. She was going to stay there because obviously I have a wife with a compromised immune system. 
We're all thinking that's a great plan, right? She's at Mar- she's down there at the beach. She's enjoying her time off. Come yesterday, hey, they started to shut down like all the dining facilities. There's one spot that she can get food. Of course, everything that they're having is not in her diet plan. Um, it's a tourist town. So bars, restaurants, food establishments are closing up. Yesterday, she's like, yeah, I think I got to get out of here. So... Yours truly will be on the road on Thursday driving to Charleston, South Carolina and back in a whirlwind trip to rescue our daughter uh, to bring her back home. Which How I, far is that? Ten hours. One way, bud. We got nothing else to do, so fuck it. Dude, I'm gonna, we're going to blow it up. I'm going to freaking blow up this trip. I am going to cruise right on down there, throw all that stuff in the vehicle, and cruise my happy ass back in a 24-hour period. Straight military op. Nice. Nah. Are you gonna wear fatigues? I'm gonna paint up my face with tiger stripes and everything. <laughs> Chuck Norris. If this virus gets in the way, I'm Chuck Norris in his ass. Dude, I, I can't wait to see the photos. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna. Someone be- else is going on in the world. Obviously, nothing other than like them canceling all fun having for like the next thirty days. Yeah, you know, it, it's kind of interesting to think about. So, all right, so today's Tuesday. So yesterday, NASCAR had, like, their State of the Union, if you will, on a conference call with a bunch of team owners and so forth, and trying to figure out how they were going to pull all this off. And it's interesting that NHRA comes out, which is just following suit, and they're like, hey, we're going to go back at it in Texas, at Houston. Which our listeners probably know right now, Texas's governor, he is like wild, wild westing it up. He hasn't shut shit down. He's like, dude, use some common sense. We're good. I'm not telling you what to do. I I mean, he's like literally. And and I'm like, man, this state is like not shut down yet. I kind of wondered about that because of the NHRA thing. They're trying to come back in Houston. Yeah, and that is definitely ahead of the timeline for the CDC. Yes. Of of eight weeks. Yes. It's it's so it's extremely interesting, which I mean that's cool. Hey, look, you you gotta be an adult. Take responsibility for your own stuff. You either act right or don't act right, but don't you know, don't infect other people. You know, if you know you got somebody that's old and, and they can't, their system's going to be compromised or it's weak in state, don't be a, an idiot and freaking go see them or get close to them or whatever the case is. But I mean, at the same time, now's not the time to, to go visit your elderly grandparents. No. And if you do want to visit them, go get a poster board, stand in the parking lot, draw a sign up <laughs> and wave at them, FaceTime them. You know what? Get a iPhone, buy it in a box, ship it to him, have it all turned on, and ring the damn bell. But no, that's crazy. My my brother's my brother's girlfriend. She had to come home. She goes to an elite uh, university in England, and they sent her home because just to make sure that she gets home before the semester for school. And we haven't been able to see her. She's been home for a week, but we haven't been able to see her. And she, they, her, my brother, and her. Stopped by my parents' house yesterday when I was there, and they only could come in the front yard of my parents' house because my mom made them dinner. So she literally had to put it on the porch, and they picked it up and waved through the windows because my grandma just moved in with my parents too, so they didn't want to. Yeah, dude, we're. I, I mean, I get it. We're it's getting pretty crazy. <laughs> like it's sad. I mean, man. we're doing it right now. I mean, fortunate enough, I've got some great owners. So, like the whole thing with going to get Emily is she's got to be quarantined for two weeks before I can let her around die. And so my owners sent their RV over here. They just pulled it in the driveway a couple hours ago. And Diane and I are going to live in their RV for two weeks while Emily goes through her quarantine deal before that she can be, you know, we can all be one happy family again. But I, I, I mean, you can't. You can't take risks, you know. Now, do I think my daughter's infected? Well, no, I don't think so. But I'm sure the people that are infected right now didn't think they were infected at some point. Uh, You know what I mean? Exactly right. Like that basketball dude that touched all the microphones. (laughs) Dude, how about I just? How about 
uh, what's his name? Um, Durant just an, posted on Twitter. He's freaking. He's got the virus. He tested positive. Him and five other basketball players on the same team. That'll do it. It's just. I, I mean, but nonetheless, it, it's one. It, it's one of those things where, right now, there's a couple people in the world that in the world of motorsports, I don't want to be, and it's the ones in the in the war rooms that got to make this decision for the plans for hospitality and marketing for the event title sponsors. I mean, it's, um, which we can get into all that once we drag in our guest or kick or roll or scream or whatever. How I, I, I just, I mean, I probably, we probably just need to go ahead and talk about our topics and then drag the guest in later. Cause I don't know that it's going to be a whole lot of valuable information. that's going to get <laughs> added to our, our conversation about our upcoming events, but nonetheless, us being a professional show and <laughs> having sponsors and so forth, we, we, we have a guest this week, um, uh, not, or well, not infected with the virus, uh, that we know of, that we know of, um, but realistically probably needs to be quarantined. Um, if not, if nothing else, Agreed. just, yeah, ju- if nothing else, just to save us all some sanity, but nonetheless, uh, um, like one of them ankle biter dogs, you know what I mean? Like freaking <laughs> Jerusalem cruising, wearing, <laughs> yep, that was her. Can't even hold it. <laughs> There she is. Can't even hold it. We can't even act like we called you. I, I, let's just say she just stormed into the garage. How about that? Well, it's small as JT, she is. JT, can you can you put in like a like a like a <laughs> the sound for like when the door comes slinging open? Because usually she got her ear on it. Well, I was kind of thinking about right now, like the Darth Vader music being played. It's kind of <laughs> what I was going for, but that or or what was the. Uh, what was the name of that uh, Canadian Mountie in the Rocky and Bullwinkle Squirrel cartoon? What was his name and the music that they always played when he came in? Uh, that was before my time because you're way too old. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm thinking that you. That if nothing else, your family will know who Ro- uh, the Canadian Mount- Mountie is. Um, for, for, we, but yeah, Darth Vader music's probably better off. Yeah, yeah you want to play Darth Vader music because you're scared. I'm scared of her. I got to live with her. Um, so anyway, so for those of you that haven't quite figured it out yet, um, our lovely guest tonight is the one and only wife of mine, Angelina Ferre. Welcome good. to the show, babe. What? You've only been married once. So who? I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> and, and since when? Since when do you we use know, descriptive man. terms to to uh, of appearances to to uh, introduce our guests? I don't know. I mean, I we, mean, this is our, our first like <laughs> live person guest. I guess you'd say. I mean, she's here in the flesh. We got to share a freaking microphone for crying out loud. Well, hey, look, if, if we could get a few more people to buy some damn T-shirts out of the store, we could afford to buy another microphone. Also true. Or at least a couple of hoodies. I mean, hello. Just saying. I feel honored. Welcome here. Let me lower the microphone down here. Hold on. Yeah, story of my oh, life. Somebody get her a story step. So there, folks, there you go. She's actually standing on a block of wood, and I'm still lowering the microphone. I just want to let every, all our listeners know that we are, as we've said for numerous weeks, we are going to a video podcast very soon. However, she is so short, we don't have a camera angle that we can fit her in to to do it for this episode. So that'll be picking up at a later Maybe next day. week. Yeah, maybe next week. Get somebody. It's sadly taller. true. This is sadly true. <laughs> hey, we only speak. We only speak the truth on racers and rental cars. Well, so we gave you your introduction. Now you get to do your elevator pitch. You get thirty seconds to tell our listeners everything about what you do besides being married to Cam. Tell me Ooh. what you do here. Ooh, I don't know. Thirty seconds. That's it. Look, wow. your we life is not. The, hey, the, you've already wasted ten. Just saying. <laughs> Okay, well, um, I guess we could start from the beginning. I wasn't always involved with cars. I actually was involved in a different kind of horsepower, which is actually horses. And Single I <laughs> horse. 
<laughs> well, multiple horses, just not at the same time. But yeah. And uh, I professionally showed them for a long time until I got into college and then had to kind of grow up and um, didn't have much time anymore. That, she's using that term rather loosely. <laughs> grow up. <laughs> These guys got jokes tonight. <laughs> yeah, I, I can tell that Cam's going to ruin your elevator pitch. So, nonetheless, so what do you do on a day-to-day basis? <laughs> <laughs> Other than deal with Cameron? Uh, <laughs> well, I take care of Jet, obviously, because um, Cameron can't even take care of himself. And, We've uh, all seen so the Instagram true. stories. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wonder Jet's still alive. I work at McLeod Racing. And I kind of dabble in a lot of different aspects of the business there on that end, um, mostly in operations and production. Um, but I'm also kind of in, a little bit in purchasing um, and really kind of anywhere they need me. They need me to help build some clutches, build some boxes, make some bolt kits. Social media assistant. <laughs> whatever, whatever. Yeah, she whatever. Everybody needs some help. I'm always in. But Yeah. That's it. That's that's your that's, that's your elevator that's really pitch. Got. You, you literally you you started at the at the three yard yard line and then went to literally the. I feel like Don forced me to skip the ahead. ninety-nine and a half well, yard I line. I mean, you only get thirty seconds. I mean, you okay? First off, you've been bombarding my Instagram for weeks, months about wanting to be on the show, wanting to be on the show, wanting to be on the show. Now you got, you got your, you got my co-host, your hubby there. He's over here politicking for you. I'm in the what? hospital and they're like, Hey, we're going to have Angie on the show. Well, that failed like a freaking <laughs> flaming pile of poo on the doorstep. And so I get you back on here. We got you back on here tonight. We're 15 minutes into the show. And, and you're over there stammering on your 30 second elevator pitch. Well, because all that both of y'all are doing are sassing me every five seconds. I can't even get to the 30 seconds to finish it. <sighs> okay, let me help you out here. So you went, you went from horse. What do they call that again? Raining. Raining. <laughs> well, yeah, I went from ring. Nobody's gonna know what that is, but it's basically the Western version of dressage, which no one's gonna know what that is either. And then massage. Um, you do massage. massage. <laughs> Tell me this. Four years into the marriage, three years into the marriage. See what I'm saying? This guy doesn't even get two words in. See? Unbelievable. <laughs> Anyways, okay. And then my dad um, got Who into. Who's your dad? My dad is Tim Boychuk. He drives a nostalgia funny car. Well, basically anything he can get his hands on. Jet cars, drive. drove top fuel. Yeah. Um, but he started all on the dirt side, um, with like a dirt modified. And then uh, he drove a legend car and a sprint car. Um, so I kind of grew up on the other side of motorsports, um, which I still think is possibly the cooler side, but I'm going to say that. Also owned Casper Raceway. <laughs> Yeah, he also owned Castrol and um, the Sprint Car Track, Drag Strip, whatever. in Edmonton. All that stuff in Edmonton, Canada. Canada. Which is where you're from. Represent. Woo-hoo. She's missing all the hot topics here. Yes, <laughs> I married a Canadian. Canuck. I had to, a Canuck. I had to import her like a fine wine because I couldn't find anybody good here in the States. It's true. Yes. Mail order it's true. Bride. Yeah, so I, I mean, kind of, no, kind of. I mean, you, we did have to pay a lot of money, so. <laughs> but I did grow up at the track, um, and then he got into an alcohol nostalgia funny car, and then it was he was kind of hooked from there. And then I slowly made the transition over, and then I was getting into the sportsman world for a few years, um, and then I met this fine gentleman sitting beside me here. And then um, he kind of sucked me in, um, paid me a lot of money to get here. And then. No, I paid a lot of money for <laughs> you to get here. I didn't pay you. But anyway. And then he so graciously let me get my super comp license in his dragster. The one that I say that I don't own anymore because it with the marriage. Yeah. I lost. Yeah. Yeah. You lost it. It's gone. Yeah. yeah it's I gone forever. So right now we're just kind of waiting, um, obviously. Because she blew the, up the motor third race. <laughs> well, Can you believe this? Cameron blew it up because he was warming it up. And the car obviously is kind of upset with him now because he only wants to go 300 and it only goes like 172. So he's just left her in the dark, you know. So I'm here to bring her back. And then he goes and blows it up. 
And then the old Rona virus over here, just messing up the rest of our plans. <laughs> the Rona virus. Bunch of baloney. <laughs> if you guys haven't noticed that we're like, what, 17 minutes into this um, or something like that, we're quite the squirrels. So. <laughs> it's oh, true. yeah. No. Yeah. That's yeah. very apparent that both of you have drastic challenges of staying on course. <laughs> it's true. And, we, and the sad part is, is we actually reproduced and made a baby <laughs> at some point. It's kind of scary. Yeah. I pity him. He's got a long road ahead of him. Speaking of going off course, I would also like to clarify one thing really quick here. Um, I am five feet tall. Exactly. Five foot zero. Um, there is no four anything. Thank you, Don. 89 pounds. <laughs> four she jumps on the scale. Nothing. Five foot nothing, and um, I actually got up to 114 pounds because I'm so jacked. When so. you were pregnant, <laughs> with a peanut butter sandwich in her hand. <laughs> Jeez. Oh All right. God. Well, so what else you got for her, Don? Yeah. <laughs> now let's 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 see if we can drive past the fire truck somebody to put this flaming thing out. Nonetheless. <laughs> Well, so let's talk, let's talk a little bit about McLeod and, and how that transpired for you. Obviously, you're coming from a motorsports family. Obviously, there was no one in your family that tried to talk you out of being involved in motorsports. So uh, some people would say kudos to them and some other people would say, what the hell are you thinking? You <laughs> could have saved her. Um, how did you end up in McLeod? Well, um, I actually got my work and travel permit and um, after being um, kind of quarantined in the States for a while until I was actually able to leave the country again um, and get a job. And Cameron put out a status on Facebook asking anybody if he knew of anyone or if they knew of anyone hiring. And please hire my immigrant. Yeah, please hire me. I need a job. I'm going crazy. Um, and uh, Krista Baldwin, who works at McLeod um, and also races, well, used to race with Cameron in um, a fuel. Uh, she commented on it and said the McLeod was hiring. So I put my resume in and I bugged them until they hired me. And then they hired me and I've been there for almost three years now. And um, yeah, they've been through a lot of changes there and I've definitely grown within the company in the last little while. And Paul's also grown the company in acquiring FTI um, transmissions and converters, which is pretty cool because it's a, an awfully awesome coincidence that we have an FTI transmission in the dragster convenient, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what but did you, what they didn't really, what they didn't really realize when, when she came here, uh, you know, yeah, she couldn't work for a little while because of, you know, getting all of her green card and everything. But um, she ran a huge business up in Canada. She's quite as little and mighty as she is. She uh, actually is quite the businesswoman. So they they hired her and I think they literally promoted you what, like four times already because they didn't realize. I mean, I think she they thought she was, oh, yeah, I'll just give you a job and then realize that she's like actually quite the little business savvy woman. So, which was pretty cool. And, you know, Paul's been really good to her and, and, uh, moving her up within the company. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. You know, it's pretty awesome. And you've got a really good gig when you go, um, Hey, I got into Pomona. It's Monday. Can I go? (laughs) And he's like, yeah, yeah, you should go. You should go. (laughs) I'm like, start the car. (laughs) He said, start the car. Yeah. Well, we tried that. I tried that for her and I blew it up. So, um, yeah, yeah, but yeah, so now she races and not only works for racing company, races a car married to a struggling top field driver. What's that like, by the way? It's interesting. Um, I mean, it's, it's good. It's awesome watching you, um, you know, get all your goals and dreams and everything, but I definitely get it now that I've, driven the car myself and then, um, get addicted myself. So (laughs) I definitely see it from a different point of view. Now I always from the outside looking in and, um, that was hard for me just because I'm pretty competitive and I don't know if you know this, but I'm kind of a shit talker. (laughs) So now I can kind of put my money where my mouth is. And, um, I don't know, we can like talk racing now and I actually know what he's talking about and I actually have done it. So 
I don't know, just brought like a different kind of perspective for sure. And made me really understand where he was coming from. She now understands why I cry myself to sleep at night trying to figure out how to do it all. <laughs> yeah. Now I have to do it times two because now I got to pay for hers and mine. That's funny though, because I've already got some sponsors. Yeah. She's got more sponsor up. money than I got this year so far. So <laughs> there is that. So tell me how you did that, by the way, because I, you know, tell the, tell the people out there in the world, because this is a show that's talked about that. <laughs> Well, I had a little bit of help in making my marketing deck because I am married to uh, the marketing expert over here. Um, But I just went for it and I can't necessarily say who they are yet, Um, but I just asked and I put out a good argument and said why I would be a great addition to the team. And um, now you're here, factory sponsored. I thought I was going to throw up, to be honest, when I was <laughs> um, in the process of asking for it, because I've never asked for anything like that in my life. And it's kind of a weird thing to ask somebody for. My the um, best advice I told her was all they're going to say is no. So if you don't ask, you're never going to know. So I've heard no pretty much my whole life. Uh, so I'm pretty immune to it and accustomed to it, but I think she was a little nervous to hear no, but yeah. like I told her, I said, you're never, you're always going to wonder if you don't ask or you don't present your package to them. And she is yet to hear no. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I'm also pretty aggressive. Like I'm pretty small, but I'm pretty aggressive and I'm a go getter and I don't, want to hear no so i'm going to make my best effort to not have to hear no so that can be pretty convincing don's just like rolling his eyes she said she said go getter and aggressive i think the word that you were looking for canuck is persistent (laughs) (laughs) just saying maybe what what did you go to college for um i actually speaking of going off course (laughs) I went to college for captioning and court reporting. So I used to be a stenographer originally. um, And then I really didn't like it. So then I hopped on um, to a not-for-profit organization doing marketing communications um, for, it was a really small not-for-profit. It was, there were only about like six people in the entire company. Um, And then the economy in Alberta kind of started going downhill and um, everything we relied on were dues. And it was a very, um, their cable lines froze, so they couldn't go on the internet. <laughs> no, we're way too resilient for that. I'm from Canada. Come on. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, it was a cool job, but I just kind of saw the end coming near um, as the dues are vol- like totally voluntary for the companies to give you. Um, and with the oil prices going down since Alberta's economy depended upon oil, um, I kind of saw that as my way to get out. And I ended up working for a company called Burnco Landscaping. Um, they had a couple other divisions in Alberta and, um, British Columbia. Um, if anybody doesn't know where that is, it's straight up from Montana (laughs) and Washington. (laughs) And, um, yeah, it was a really big change for me. Um, I've made a lot of changes, but it was definitely my favorite job that I had. Um, I kind of did a lot of the hiring, firing, training, some purchasing, receiving, um, hopping in the loader if I had to, to load some trucks on a forklift if I had to load a truck. Um, It was a really, really cool job. Um, And then I ended up getting talked into moving to good old Huntington Beach over here. And there was another huge career change. Um, I kind of thought I was going to have to start from the bottom, which I did. Um, because I don't have a degree. I only have a diploma and is in captioning and court reporting. So it's just kind of useless, <laughs> but I don't know. I'm just determined. And like you said, persistent. So just we'll go get her <laughs> and making sure I work my way back up again. <laughs> wow. You are famous and fancy. <laughs> Don's just speechless over here. Look at him. No, yeah, he can't even handle it. He can't even like picture me in a loader right now. <laughs> He's just like, okay. The first time I went up to see her at work one time, I got a <laughs> side side note. She, she like when she went into the the field or the yard or whatever the hell you want to call it. It was like it's this huge place. It's not like Home Depot. Don't. It's like this. I don't even know how to big construction material. So she had to wear steel toed boots whenever she went to go yell at the guys in the back. So these things were literally like, I don't know, maybe mm, six inches long. <laughs> it's 
steel toe boots. Pretty sure they were custom made. They're the cutest little things you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> yeah. I was legit, bro. Okay. I Don, you legit. ever seen a pair of steel toe boots that the steel of the toe actually goes to the heel because it's just a steel <laughs> boot? They don't make them small enough. I think we made Don like short circuit right now. We can't even <laughs> handle it. Look at him. <laughs> I, I didn't honest- expect that to do. I honestly am just sitting over here going, this feels more like the freaking Love Connection show than it does freaking Racers and Rental Cars podcast. <laughs> well, when it all derails, when everyone gets coronavirus, we kind of get a little stir crazy, and now we're here. Well, so, I don't disagree with that. So, all right. See? Thank you for downloading today's episode of Racers and Rental Cars podcast, brought to you by MotionRaceworks.com. Stop by MotionRaceworks.com for all of your high-performance needs. If you need to go fast, MotionRaceworks.com. Hey, Cam. Yes, Don. Do you ever think about how crammed your trailer is when you go race? Dude, all the time. Race cars, golf carts, jets, power wheels, and all of his toys, his little dirt bikes, his strider bikes, all that stuff. I'm crammed. But I'm sure everybody in motorsports is feeling the same way. Well, now our audience has someone to call. I need to call Lance at lbtrailers.com. Lance is carrying over 70 motorsports haulers in stock options from top to bottom. We always talk about looking the part in motorsports, traveling up and down the road and at the track. Now you can look the part with LB Trailer Sales. Go to online to lbtrailers.com or stop by Facebook at LB Trailer Sales. You have a friend in the trailer business and make sure to tell them that Racers and Rental Cars sent you. We're we're gonna we're gonna try something different since we since we have this completely uh, uncompensated guest tonight. Um, we're we're gonna get, I want to try something different, and we'll see how this works out. Maybe we'll we'll implement this in the future. Rapid fire questions? No, because that's been like done like so many times. It's been done over. Matter of fact, I heard the new one. Uh, today for is by Xfinity. Xfinity came on board for the door bumper clear on Dirty Mo Media, and so now it's like you know Xfinity's internet services and cellular services like laser fast or whatever the wording is. And so now that's the at the end of the show they do the Xfinity uh, portion of the show, and it's like rapid fire questions, with different phrasing. But I'm like, no, we're not doing that. It's because your brain doesn't work fast enough, so you couldn't handle rapid-fire questions in the first place, right? Listen, your one brain cell is just now starting to fall out <laughs> over there in Huntington Beach. So, okay. But look, one one phone call to the State Department, your ass will be back in Alberta. <laughs> Do you know how many people uh, say that on, to me? On, on the loader. You're, you're with your steel <laughs> six-inch steel toe boots. All right? Pass them out to you when you go across the border. Nonetheless. At least have a ride, at least, you know? Heck yeah. All right. So this we're we're gonna do this. So tell uh tell our listeners one thing that not even Cam knows about you. Oh god. Ooh, oh my gosh. Something that Cameron doesn't even know about me. And, um, and we're only a sixty minute show. Oh my gosh. I don't even know. You basically know everything. You kinda hmm. Nope. <laughs> There's one that, nope. All right, here, Cam, do you know who you, you ate the last peanut butter patty out of the freezer? No. Cam, no. do you know what? do you know who her first kiss was? Who her first kiss was? Uh, See, you uh, don't. I don't know. She's really no. eight. No, he doesn't. See? There. <laughs> See, how how do I know the answers Talk to these there? questions? No. Oh. <laughs> no, um, his name was Mike, and it was in grade six, <laughs> and uh, we exchanged gum. Oh, yeah, that's a it serious was real classy. That, that's you know a, me. Was it bubble? Was it bubblelicious? <laughs> Duh! Is there any other kind of gum when you're in grade six? <laughs> no, you're welcome. How does this relate to marketing? <laughs> on a sc- on a scale of one to ten, what is your level? When it comes to marketing, ooh, ooh, um, I'd say I'm like a solid eight. Yeah, she's pretty good at it. I'm like a solid eight, I would say. Um, that's my jam. I love marketing. It's I'm a people person, and um, I'm very 
persistent and I, I like to try to convince people of things. I like to play devil's advocate and I like to try to convince people of stuff and sell people on things. So that is one of my strong suits. Yeah. All right. Last question. Tell us about a time when Cam was a total jackass. Oh, man. All right. I got a where racers and rental cars. Where uh, should you start? <laughs> jackass no, moment. Like, like, see, I I know if that question is posed to Diane, she had, they're like ranked. Like, she's like, oh, this one was number one. This time, this time was number two. This time was number three. She would rank them. You're falling off. <laughs> okay. I say number one is blowing up my motor in Phoenix. Um, that Her was, motor. yeah. Yeah. I feel like I had never felt that before, you know, like having a broken car so you can't race. So that was my first time. Like I lost my broken car virginity and that was rough. I was, I potted for like, I don't know, probably two hours. (laughs) Um, But number two, um, (laughs) this talented top fuel pilot right here piloted the beautiful blue rocket van right into this. (laughs) It was kind of like a retaining wall. Oh, we talked about this recently. Yeah, it's kind of like a retaining wall structure. And um, so we're, we're in Banff. We're on vacay. Banff is in Alberta. Um, it's right in the Rocky Mountains. And we're there with his sister and his brother-in-law, uh, her husband. And he gets the rental car, okay? So his brother-in-law gets the rental car. And thank the Lisa's Lord. This is rental car related. Yeah. <laughs> thank the Lord gets the extra insurance. But says Cameron always the, <laughs> get the extra insurance. Cameron is the only one to be able to drive it. Okay. Big mistake. Also <laughs> terrible idea. <laughs> but um, so my best friend and I have jet and we're standing on the patio to go into the condo and we just see Cameron. He's trying to park the car and we saw him drive by and went around the corner and then we're like, okay, he's probably finding a parking spot. We turn around five minutes later, he comes back hauling around the corner. There he is again. I'm like, okay, I wonder if he found it on this other side, comes back around the corner again, just making passes, making laps. Right, and it's a l- electric blue minivan. It was gorgeous. Had lots of cool features. And, um, so he's driving back and forth. Little does he know he's made a lap like five times past a parkade. Okay. Five times. Parkade for Americans is a parking garage. Oh, yeah. Um, so he drives. So I walk out there. I'm like, okay, Cameron, there's a parkade right here. You keep driving past it. Get on down there. Let's go. Jet's tired. Let's go. And he goes, he starts to drive down the parkade. In the very middle of the courtyard is this retaining wall structure. It's like a kind of like a garden y on a rocky little structure and he had to drive by it to go into the parkade. So he starts backing up cause there's a guy down at the gate and he gooses it and rams the back of the van into the like solid retaining wall structure. And it was so loud cause it was dead silent. You're in the mountains, right? Like just nobody. <laughs> look at Kelly. I'm like, he crashed the rental car and everybody runs outside. There's Cameron having a heart attack, just trying to like buff it out a little bit, like walk it off. It's so funny. Whatever guys. So yeah, one time I, I, I screwed up a rental car. It was gold. Yeah. Yeah. Just down. Apparently that was the one time that I've been a jackass, which actually isn't too bad for wrecking a rental car. I'm sure I've been a jackass yeah. at least six times this week, but yeah, you just weren't present. <laughs> I just didn't know. Yeah. Still trying to figure it out. Oh man. So what are your goals and ambitions in racing? Um, I would like to um get into a fast door car one day, specifically uh Don O'Neill's car one day. Yeah, um, I teed that up. Just <laughs> hear this? Hear oh. that? That's me putting my golf ball right on the tee. <laughs> yeah, nailed it. <laughs> Look, that's look. <laughs> Here we I, go. Look, Here. I'm all for you. If you want to come do a burnout in a car, I, we're we're totally good with that. I will tell you, being someone that came from driving dragsters back into door cars, is that that nice 235 to 245 inches of length is like a nice warm wubby for a race car driver when it comes to like geometry. And physics, it's like lovely because when you 
stick your little skinny ass in a 105 inch wheelbase door car and it decides to try to throw you over in the passenger seat when you turn loose to the trans brake button you will be in for a world of hurt that six inch steel toe boot ain't is not going to save your little ass okay that's all i want to say but if you want to come do a burnout we'll figure out how to get you if you want to do a burnout in a door car <laughs> First of all, thank you for uh, calling me skinny. I think that's the nicest thing you ever said to me. Uh, two, <laughs> I'm not going to give up that easy. I'm pretty sure we just talked about this for like the last half an hour. And I'm not going to give up. And I am going to claw my way <laughs> into that car, okay? <laughs> so, have you ever watched the movie Days of Thunder? Are you kidding me? So, Are you, you serious? So that should have been one of the questions. That is my favorite movie of all time. D- yep. So do you remember when Rowdy Burns told Cole, "You run good," <laughs> and he goes, "Thank you." He goes, "Now go get your own car. We'll see how you run in a pack." <laughs> <laughs> so badass! Such a good part of the movie. <laughs> oh, I can't even be mad at you right now. That's so. Oh, such a good part of the movie. Oh, jeez. Stumped her, Don. That stumped her. <laughs> all right. Did he? <laughs> As long as she watched Days of Thunder, that's that's that gets her a couple good marks right there. Yeah. We just watched Ford versus Ferrari last night. It was really good. Too. We yeah. actually watched it a couple nights ago as well for the yeah. first time. I, I will say that was an awesome movie. Like being a guy that kind of critiques motorsports movies, it was really good. It was really good. Yeah. I was impressed. Dude, I, I cried. So for those of you that are bored off your gourds. Uh, during the coronavirus epidemic, and you've listened to all hundred and what? I, what did you say? iTunes said one hundred and thirty. <laughs> iTunes says we're at one hundred and thirty-four episodes. Yeah, if you've uh, <clears throat> but be ready to cry because I I couldn't even like compose myself. I was like hysterical. Kim was like, "Are you crying?" I'm like, "I didn't even want to watch this." <laughs> don't give it. Don't give it away. Bro. Yeah, I didn't can't give ruin it. Away. Can't ruin it. I didn't. I didn't. But you probably will cry. Yeah. yeah, it was a good movie though. It was, it was a real, real good movie. I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. Die and I watched it first time. If you um, actually paid attention to my social media, Don, you would know that Days of Thunder is one of my favorite movies because um, on my stories, when we went to um, Fontana to go and do the NASCAR experience, because my boss is the best boss ever and gets us all in on the experience, so we got to drive the NASCARs and. Coming in the gate, I turned on that Days of Thunder theme music ASAP, and we rolled into it, all right? And all day long, all I had were one-liners from Days of Thunder. <laughs> it was amazing. I was like, I was made for this moment. <laughs> I love it. Peach or cherry? <laughs> <laughs> so good. Oh, jeez. Oh, so all right. Well, we definitely have brought our listeners up to speed with a little bit of background. Uh, to to follow along with what we're going to consider uh, Cam's better half. Yeah, uh, what I have to deal with on a daily basis. <laughs> Apologies. Yeah, I'm, you guys get her for forty minutes. I get her for forty years. You're so lucky. <laughs> You're so lucky. You're welcome. <laughs> all right. Well, as we as we send you off, like we do all of our guests, we got two questions for you. The first one. You get to send one Christmas card to somebody in motorsports. Who are you sending it to? Um, can I have um like more than one? Can I have three. Nope, one Christmas card. Uh, you got one, one god dang stamp. You can uh, just follow the okay. rules. <laughs> She's gonna require more than one if it's coming from Canada. <laughs> no shit. She probably needs three. Yeah. <laughs> you get three stamps, one card. How's that? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to send my thank you card to... Um, no, it's a Christmas card. It's a card. Merry Christmas, Christmas card. card. I'm going to say Merry Christmas to Don O'Neill um, <laughs> just because um, foreshadowing because I'm going to get to drive your car. <laughs> That's it. Oh, it's not man. This car. You should send it to JB. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, send it to the wrong guy. <laughs> yeah, send it to the car owner. Uh, I'll try to lay the groundwork for you, but send, send the car to the, to the car owner. <laughs> All right, you get one WTF card to somebody in motorsports. Who's it going to? Mm. I'm so, going to say Cameron Ferre. Wow. <laughs> For hurting my motor. Wow. I was ready to get some in Phoenix, all right? I was turning the jets on, okay? 
<laughs> wow. We'll go out on a limb and say Cam didn't get any in Phoenix either. <laughs> uh, true story. Uh, the only thing I got was a six hour or seven hour drive home with in a silence. Blown up engine. With a blown a blowed up engine. <laughs> and a uh, screaming toddler. All right, Ange, tell everybody where they can follow you and find out about any of your racing exploits across this great country of the United States. In four to six weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Racing coverage is a little on hold right now, but I did slash will have some exciting stuff coming up. But uh, now that we're on hold, kind of kibosh that idea. Uh, but you can follow me on Instagram at Ange Foray. A N G F E R R E, um, or on Facebook at Angelina Ferre. And um, you can also hit up McLeod Racing at www.mcleodracing.com, um, or you can hit up FTI at FTIPerformance.com. Well, wow. Ange, thank you very much for coming on the show. We appreciate you blessing us with your presence <laughs> and entertainment which I think is probably exactly what everybody needed. Uh, and turning this. us into an entertainment show, not a business show anymore. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. <laughs> and uh, yes, thank you very much for coming by while we're all battling the case of the Ronies. Now get the hell out of my chill zone. <laughs> AKA my garage. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. Good game. Good game. All right. <laughs> Well, that was interesting, and it was a good time. I, I hope that yep. she enjoyed it, and I'm sure we will get plenty of feedback from our listeners about having her on the show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's, uh, she's a pistol, that's for sure. And uh, I'm just lucky enough to do life with her. Oh, my God. <laughs> I got to suck up a little bit, dude. Come on. Dude, this is not the Hallmark Channel. All right. It could be the Hallmark channel. It is not the freaking gonna, Hallmark dude, channel. They, Hallmark better come out with some freaking movies here pretty quick because I'm pretty sure I've watched everything on Netflix. <laughs> but speaking of Netflix, they, have you seen the... This is racing related, so I can talk about it. Uh, another good show that you guys can watch in your coronavirus whatevers is uh, that F1 reality show. Have you seen that? No, I have not. Oh, dude, you got to download it or watch it or stream it or whatever the hell you want to call it. What's it called? Um, I don't know, but it's... Are you for real? <laughs> yeah, but it's uh, it just showed up in like the popular thing because it just came out with the second season. So, um, But it's all about like the behind the scenes of F1. All right, I'll have to search it. Yeah, it, there's uh, there's two seasons and the second season just started. So it was about the 2019 season. It's rad. Like, you know, because F1, dude, F1 is freaking gnarly. Everybody knows that. It's millions and millions and millions and millions and millions, millions of dollars. So um, it's pretty crazy how they spend their cash. And then they're still like poor teams, which their poor team budget is still like $100 million. It's nuts. Oh, yeah, for sure. But yeah, seriously, look it up. I forget what it's called, but something like type in like search F1 and I'm sure it'll come up. All right. So you ready to get down to some business here? Sure. He's his homeboy rolls out his national dragster. Yeah. <laughs> I, honestly, I, I do want to give a shout out to national dragster because I'm sorry, but this was like awesome. This whole calendar deal that they've got oh, yeah, yeah. with all the races for all the divisions across the country. Um, I enjoy it. It's very easy for me to pull out and look. And so that being said, what I want to talk about and, and I guess I got, you know, for our listening audience going to kind of focus this towards the NHRA side of the house, because I, I really feel like for us on the NHRA side, I think that our making up of races and so forth could be, potentially be just a little bit tougher to do uh, than the NASCAR side because of kind of the way the NASCAR schedule is laid out, logistically speaking, with the options that they have for their venues. I feel like they probably, yeah, it's going to be, you know, challenging for them to lay it out. But I feel like other than inserting uh, how they're going to pull off Texas, 
I, I think with their NASCAR schedule of Atlanta and Martinsville and Charlotte and them having a couple open weekends, because now who the hell knows if we're going to have the Olympics. Um, I, I feel like there's potentially obviously has significant financial implications, but I, f- I feel like logistically speaking, theirs is probably easier to make up these races that they've postponed than the NHRA schedule. Um, and I think that's really because it's fewer, fewer teams, but the locations are, are kind of spread out, um, on the timeline wise. And so, um, you being a fuel driver, uh, at one of the, the lower income teams kind of wanted to, to see how you think we're screwed. I I mean, it, it really is. I mean, okay. So, Obviously, we've got to make up Gainesville, which is in Florida. Well, I'm just saying before, I mean, before you even talk about makeup stuff, like we're like, honestly, we don't really know what we're going to do once things like we literally live off qualifying money. So when there's no races happening, we have no qualifying money. So um, aside from the little sponsorship that we do get, it's going to be really tough to even we got to work really hard to even get back out there, to be honest. Oh, I mean. That's, I mean, that is the one thing I had not heard about any of the NHRA teams, uh, shutting doors or laying off, uh, you know, team personnel. Um, I have not heard of any layoffs on the NASCAR side, but I do know that they published a report, uh, yesterday afternoon of the teams, uh, Penske, Gibbs, Richard Childress, Stuart Haas, that they've all shut down operations. They have not laid off personnel, but they have shut down their operations during this time to try to keep uh, everyone as healthy as they possibly can. Yeah, I mean that that's that's literally just the facts. I I mean, not trying to sugarcoat it or poor me or poor us, but I mean, it is what it is. I mean, everybody's going through it and I had a conversation with somebody yesterday about it and at the end of the day, it's going to even be harder and harder to acquire sponsorship on a regional level. Like we try to do it at a lot of different venues because everybody's businesses are shut down. So their extra money is housing and paying for their employees to stay, to keep a job and, you know, way more important stuff than us going racing at the end of the day. Like there's a lot, there's a lot more things in the world that are more important to people than, than going racing. But when racing is your livelihood, it's also important to go racing. So it's going to be very interesting to, uh, to see what happens in the, in the coming weeks. Um, yeah. So I'm hoping for, uh, good news, but yeah. So back to, back to the schedule part of it, the, what you're bringing up, like rescheduling all, all these races, like you're going to be crisscrossing across the country. And then even if, if, and when we do get back on tour, that's going to be a lot of money in crisscrossing around the country and having somebody said that they were going to do like 12 weeks in a row. Like, wow, that's big. Obviously all of us want to speculate, right? We're all trying to figure it out because of course we're worried about the health of everyone, but at the same time, we're all quarantined. We're not getting to go racing. We're not, there's no racing to watch. There's no racing to talk about except for I racing, which yes, I'm still looking for use sim. Uh, which is a huge I race is on tonight for NASCAR on esports. If anybody, well, they're not listening today. Uh, nonetheless, but you know, they're making the tough decisions about this schedule. And then we're over here and we're trying to figure out how we're going to fit in. And so if you really look at it, NHRA, yes, they're, are they concerned about the sportsman schedule? They're going to leave that up to the division directors and those racetracks that are going to have to plan it. Obviously, there's a few racetracks that have national and divisional events at their, at their facilities. But just think about being NHRA trying to say, okay, guys, we know we don't typically go east of the, or west of the Mississippi after you come back from Vegas until we go on the Western Swing. But We got to figure out how to get Vegas one back in the program. And, you know, I don't think that you can just arbitrarily say, okay, we're just going to add it to the countdown. You know, we're going to go to go to Indy and then the races that we need to make up, we're just going to throw them in the countdown somewhere. 
I, I you know, you got. Dish. Yeah, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. But what's crazy is uh, like some of the, even the big money bracket races, they like the fling aside from the pro side, like the fling, I got a text today that said that they're still shooting to run it, which, but it also said with a big caveat, depend upon, you know, the city and the organ or, or regulations and of the state and whatnot. But, and mind you, that race is in Vegas. So there's a lot going on in Vegas right now. So I'll be curious to see what happens there. And then when you reschedule that, you got a lot of people coming from back East that probably aren't going to want to come back to the West when racing is hot and heavy on the East coast. And it's not 120 degrees in Vegas. I don't know what you do. To be honest, I, I really don't. I understand why they want to continue to reschedule these races because they're sponsors and, and fans in those geographic areas that aren't able to go to other events. But dude, it, I mean, regardless, it's, it's either going to be the communities that lose money, the racers that lose money, or, I mean, somebody's or in HRA. Now, maybe this, I thought about this earlier, maybe with all of this happening, it might lead them to consider shortening the tour for in in years to come for such reasons like this because then they'd have more time and more options right if you only had an 18 race schedule you got a couple other weekends that you can fill in right okay so let's go with that because it, it was on my list but it was kind of a, a a variation of what you're saying i was kind of thinking about it along the lines of shortening the event and making the event go by quicker to happen. Like, you know, in my head, I'm thinking, well, we've lost, right? You've lost Gainesville. And potentially, if we go with CDC, we're going to lose Houston and Charlotte. So we already know that the potential would then at that point be to go to Atlanta. Well, there's an off week on the schedule between Atlanta and going to Richmond. Well, you're in Atlanta, so pick one. You're you're at, the, at that point. You're in the middle. It's four hours to Charlotte, and it's what five and a half to Gainesville, six to Gainesville from there. So, and I feel like Bruton Smith would win that argument, so it would be Charlotte. Well, he has to. You have to also wait and see. NASCAR would have to can the All Star race because mm. that would be the same weekend. But nonetheless. It's drastic times. Does NASCAR need the all-star race at this time when they need that weekend to fill in somewhere and and then be able to make up a race that's logistically close to them over that time frame? I, I just feel like we can get into a situation where maybe it is Saturday night style. Wouldn't that be kind of cool that we just, you know, we run Atlanta on on the weekend and then the following Wednesday or Thursday – before Memorial Day, we're at Charlotte for under the lights for two nights. I I, I don't know. I think that the it's. I a, mean, I can tell you if that happens, I won't be there because I got a job, right? And I work, and yeah. there's a lot of people that won't be able to do that. And, and that and that's a, it's absolutely true. I I just I guess the drastic side of it is to try to not look, not take anything off the table. You know, people say, "Oh, you can't do that." Well, why can't you? Yeah, I mean, we didn't think that we would be shutting down sporting events. I mean, the Masters, the, I mean, completing seasons. They're talking about baseball not starting opening day until May, but that they're going to shorten the season. They'll make adjustments. I think we have, everybody has to do their part uh, that they can, but also at the same time, you mentioned it. It's going to be business business impacted. I had an executive tell me today, that just through the month, the month of April, it's going to cost their company a half a million dollars Woo. in business because we're not racing. Wow. Once, you, once you're behind a half a mil, it's not like you just make that up. Yeah, that's... Uh, woo. It's not like you say, oh, well, I just screwed up one exam. I, I screwed up everything up until the midterm. 
I'm kind of hosed right now on my GPA. Nice analogy. Just saying. Just saying. But yeah, man, I, I, I don't even know where you, what you do or say. I'm glad that I'm not really the one making the decisions, to be honest, because I wouldn't want to make them. Oh, I don't want to be the France family. I don't want to be Steve Phelps. I don't want to be Glenn Cromwell and the staff. Jason Peterson. I, I, I mean, Josh or Josh. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> Yeah, you are with names. I'm good. Jason, Josh, 220, 240, 230. Slippy, slappy, swin, swan, swan, Samson. Sorry. You know, it's all the same. Nonetheless, but I would like to be in the room when to understand where their, where their thought process starts to head and how they plan on tackling it. Because there's a lot of people that are involved. T-shirt vendors, main gate, Center, uh, what is it? Center plate for concession stands. All these people that are hourly workers and and I, I dude, it's a it's just a straight up catastrophe. And we're just over here focused on just the motorsports part part of it. We're not even talking about the health side. So, well, that's what I mean. Like, the, there's so many bigger fish to fry when you when you look at this in the wide when you don't look at it from the hundred foot view, you look at it from the 30,000 foot view, like there's, whew, there's a lot more going on. Oh, absolutely. Than- absolutely. Well, that being said, dude, take us home. We'll try to reconvene next home, week. I am home. Uh, well, I'm in the doghouse, AKA my garage. Well, I'm just glad that uh, you're quarantined and not going to school, so I don't have to be up at 11 o'clock at night trying to record a podcast. So, hey, you know, you could get like not all heroes wear capes, buddy. Do what? Not all heroes wear capes. Yeah, they carry (laughs) they carry a fanny pack. Is that what you carry over there at Cheetos College? Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Uh oh, uh oh, here comes. Here comes our special guest. What do you need? I didn't mean to eat and run, but <laughs> I could hear Jet on the other side of the wall. And poor Bryco, oh man. <laughs> he was so hungry. He yeah. like just wolfed down like a handful of chicken and peppers. Nice. Okay. What can I do for you? I was just coming to say bye. Okay. Bye. <laughs> well, hey, Ange. Do you, so do you listen to our podcast? Do you know who our sponsors are? Uh, the trailer company and PDS data systems and what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, yeah. LMS it's not, trailer systems. No, it's, no. it's LB Something trailers. trailers. LB, LB trailers. Yes. Systems. It's motion race works. Motion race works and PDS data systems. Voice America. And voice America. Mm. Voice America. <laughs> <laughs> For all of our sponsors out there, we please hope that you do not hold against us the fact that our guests do not know who our sponsors are. But we do, and we greatly appreciate you, along with Stupid Fast Racing, carrying all our swag. Go to the online stores. Thank you very much, Ange, for being on. Cam, go says, see if you can you. get you I a new jackass her. moment. Yeah, you know, I'm going to go see. I got a kid screaming in the kitchen. I can hear him because she's got the door open now. I got to run. But yes, thank you, Voice America, for producing and helping with all of that LB trailer sales. Go buy yourself a trailer. I need to do that myself. Performance data systems. My little son jet here. Hey buddy. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, he wants to get down and motion race works. Go buy yourself some LS stuff. So later. See ya.